most of the clients I work with, you know, they're, they're not doing a lot of coding in the back end. They want things as simple as possible. So um, this one kind of originated as a bit of a training exercise with a council up in Northern Hawke's Bay at uh, Wairau District Council. Uh, so effectively what we wanted to try and do was uh, string together a whole bunch of processing commands into uh, one little app that they could run. Uh, and essentially what it does is if you pick a point on the map, it's going to run through a road network for X amount of metres and it will work out what parcels are affected by that road network and then what buildings are on those parcels. Okay, so this is what it kind of looks like when it runs. Um, so we're in the processing toolbox over on the right hand side there and you see under training I've got a little model which is called affected buildings. So if I run that, it gives me some simple dialogue which allows me to specify things. Okay, so first thing I need to specify is where my building footprints are coming from. So I've got a lovely little layer called Wairoa Vector Buildings and Swimming Pools. Um, and second thing we're going to do is we're going to click a location on the map and that's where our event happens, whatever that event might be. So I'll go and click a location on the map there and you see it just passes across the coordinates, nice and simple. Uh, second thing we need to know is uh, the land parcels that uh, our buildings sit on. So we'll go and select the uh, layer from our list there. And then we want to travel down a road network. So I'm going to choose road centre lines. And for this particular case, let's go uh, 500 metres in all directions from that event. Okay. Um, the rest of it is just about um, giving names to output layers. So we'll, we'll just run with the defaults. Okay. So it's going to ask me for a coordinate system. I'm going to go OK. And away it goes. It's doing its thing. OK. And if I close that, essentially what we get on the map is there's our event location. It's travelled down the road network 500 metres. It's buffered off that road network uh, about 20 odd metres to pick up any land parcels. And then it's uh, identified any buildings that sit on those land parcels. Okay, so we can do some further analysis at that point. Okay, so that's made it really, really easy for um, council staff to use. You know, they're just inputting a whole bunch of values. Um, so they can reuse that model whenever they like. Uh, we can edit that model in a, a little GUI tool. So what we've got down the uh, uh, left-hand side there are all the inputs to the model. Uh, down through the middle are all the functions that we're using and then we're getting some output and some styling down the right hand side. So you can see there we've got that uh, function for picking a point on the map. Uh, we've got our service area which is the running the network on the, on the, uh, the roads, uh, doing some buffering and extracting things by location. Um, so we can come back to this you know, in a year's time and, and add to it or uh, rerun the whole thing. So uh, the great thing about all that is we can start to add in additional functions in there. So maybe at the end of that we might want to do some more analysis on the building footprints that we've picked up. Um, and one of the interesting things about using QGIS to do this is because it's open source, we're not just limited to all the processing power in QGIS, we can actually dive out to other geographic information systems like GRASS uh, and like Saga and we can actually say, right, go and do this processing for me, give me back a result and then I'll do something else with it. All right, so we can happily dive between systems without, without actually really knowing that we're going to those systems. Okay. Cool. The one you didn't mention was R. Yes. Yeah. Right, so there you go. <laughs> um, so once again, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, uh, on time here, so that's great. Uh, so is there any questions on that? Sweet. Sorry, that's QGIS there. Yes. Okay, that's that's a specific functionality that exists in QGIS itself. All right, yeah. So it has its own model builder, which you typically see in vendor-based products like that horrible big thing called Esri and ArcGIS, and yeah, um, QGIS does all that, and it's open source. It has a massive array of spatial functionality, um, and what you don't have in there, you can use in these other GIS systems, which are also open source. <laughs> no, well, that's, that's all I've got here, 16 gigs, so yeah, yep. I suppose you need to optimise this. 
No, no, not at all. Um, so um, that's the very latest version, um, which is uh, 3.4. Now that was released, when was it released, Brent? I can't quite remember now. End of last year? Yeah. Anyway, the, the big thing going from version 2 QGIS to version 3 QGIS is went from Python 2 to uh, Python 3. All the QT libraries were updated. Uh, so it's quite a different beast to the old version 2 QGIS. change <laughs> really quickly <laughs> okay thank you very much